Your main event. I still can't believe this actually happened. Brian Danielson versus Satnam Singh. You know, when they announced this match, I was like kind of a little gleefully excited because it's like Brian Danielson and Satnam Singh. And I guess I thought maybe it would be better than it was. But at the end of the day, it was a weird match on paper. It was a poor match in the ring. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't even beat Satnam Singh. No, it didn't help anyone. No. I mean, it was short. Satnam killed him for a while. Danielson was able to uh, like get up on the apron, look him in the eye, kick him a few times. He hit the knee strike, but the giant didn't go down. We should mention before you get there that Sanjay tried to clear off the announce table yes. for a spot. And this tiny little man, probably about my size, he goes to clear off the table and the goddamn table explodes. Explodes! Like Andre the Giant at a kid's table. Just goes fucking exploding in the air. And Sanjay just turns his back to the camera and starts to walk away. <laughs> and I think Danielson figured out what happened because he did a couple of spots and then he had uh, Sotnam chokeslam him on the ring apron. Yeah. And my presumption is that was supposed to be a chokeslam through the table. Yeah. And they just they just went to that. But yeah. what the hell? Shit happens sometimes. So the giant won't go down for the, the, uh, the knee strike. So Danielson starts doing the yes kicks to the chest. But the giant starts to shrug them off. And like from one knee drops Brian with a giant overhand slap. But he picks Danielson up. Danielson elbows him from the uh, fireman's carry position. Takes it down to the mat. Gets him in the little bell lock. And then Sanjay and company attack for the DQ. Yeah. yeah. My write-up a was... A disqualification. Yeah, it, was, it was Danielson's worst match in years and still more fun than it had any right to be. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. I had low expectations for this. I mean, I did too, but I thought we'd at least get a finish. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I mean, listen, I, I'm the first guy to tell you they could use more DQs because they, they book themselves into the corner. They don't want to beat either guy. And then, you know, whatever. And actually, the, the bigger issue is they don't want to beat so many guys, so they just don't do the matches. That's the key, yeah, yeah. And uh, I would much rather, I actually saw some stars have matches together with a winner I can't figure out, and then there's a DQ or whatever. Once in a while, not multiple on every show, but once in a while. And finally, we get the match where they don't want to beat either guy, and it's fucking Brian Danielson and Satnam Singh. We have to get a DQ for that. In the main event of the go home show for the pay per view, yes. that Sodom Singh isn't even on. Right. He's not even on the show. So I was baffled. So the uh, the uh, Sanjay's crew, Sanjay and crew, are stomping a hole in Danielson. Out come the Bucks, and uh, with a big fat envelope of cash, they pay off the other heels who disappear. Danielson makes his comeback against both Bucks, but he, he is distracted by Okada's music. And then Jack Perry jumps in from behind. He is getting quadruple teamed. He eats a rainmaker. They're about to throw him off the stage when he, the big screen cuts to the parking lot, where a fancy car arrives. Darby Allen gets out with a weapon of some sort. We see Tony Khan is in fact driving. So I think this is the end of the Tony Khan story. He uh, he's, he's dude, got, it better be. He got his revenge. He delivered this man. To no, him. not just that, but like the whole storyline was the young bucks are in charge. Because they beat up Tony Khan and he wasn't allowed to travel. Yes. Remember yes, he had to stay yes. in Jacksonville. Yes. This show was in California. Not Jacksonville. So he drove from Jacksonville when he found out Darby wasn't allowed in the building. That's a lot longer than two hours. Yeah, yeah. So Darby comes out on stage wielding a flamethrower. Yes. This is not a metaphor or a euphemism. It's a weapon that throws flame. Yes. And I gotta say, you know how... Uh, Sometimes a guy win a title. I think, man, that guy just looks right wearing that title belt. Darby Allen just looks right wielding a flamethrower. It's a natural fit. You know, I have told you guys many times that in canon, in storyline, this Tony Khan character is a complete fucking lunatic. Yeah. A complete sadistic asshole. Yes. That's his character. Yeah. So you're telling me that the Young Bucks barred Darby from the building and Tony Khan said, Darby, I got an idea. I got a car. I can drive. Do you have a flamethrower? Darby, of course, says, well, goddamn, of course I have a flamethrower. I'm fucking Darby Allen. And Tony says, 
get that flamethrower. I'm going to drive you to the building. We're going to burn their asses to the ground. And that's what they fucking did. They showed up with a goddamn flamethrower. The fucking guy who runs the company brought this guy to the building with a flamethrower to burn these motherfuckers to a crisp. And actually, funny, we're going to get that on uh, Sunday, aren't we? Burnt to a fucking crisp. That is the tease. In the main event, in Anarchy in the Arena, where anything goes, Darby Allen's going to light somebody on fire. Yes, with a flame fucking thrower. Yeah, from from a distance. Please, everybody, can we be safe here? I don't want anyone to get hurt. They threw Nick off off the ramp through a table. That went badly. Yeah. He uh, got all cut up and appeared to be pulling chunks of wood out of his back. Yeah. Yeah. Between that and... uh, Eric Young a few weeks ago in TNA. There's a, been a, it's like there's a, a motion within wrestling to prove me wrong for saying that going through tables does not hurt. Yeah. You know, it, it, it can go badly. It can go very badly. There you go. That was Dynamite. I thought it was an exciting show. <laughs> <laughs> Gave us an lot. exciting show. Yeah. Gave us a lot to talk about. I thought it was uh, It was not their best go-home show. I thought it was uh, I thought it was all right. Point of a go-home show is like, I got to get excited for all the matches. Right? Yeah, right, right. I got to get excited for the matches. They certainly didn't get me excited for Christian and Swerve. I was like, okay, well, that's a foregone conclusion. And then, you know, Moxie just laying out Takeshita, who you already figured was going to be a loser anyway, made him look like a loser. And then, you know, they've threatened flames and fire and somebody getting killed. I guess that's kind of exciting. That's definitely exciting. It was very exciting. But I I get worried, you know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a, Fuck. a kind of excitement they tried to blow up a ring several years ago and it didn't explode no it was terrible so what's gonna happen with that flamethrower like the ops is gonna happen it's gonna go like this and like a nuclear bomb's gonna go off or something crazy and i'll fucking be sitting right there i don't want to get burnt up oh that's true and it's an indoor building too yeah yeah there's nowhere the fire to go except like onto the fans fuck hmm hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.